The news for XRP just does not stop. This is getting absolutely crazy. And so we just had the lawsuit that was just ended a couple of days ago, right? They paid a very small fraction of the fees that were intended. And so that's very bullish for Ripple, right? The lawsuit has finally ended after four years. And so we have the price currently trading at about 58 cents. However, I'm going to be sharing some news that I just found out, information that I do not think we should have access to. And so I have some of the largest banks participating with Ripple, and I have proof of that. And so I'm going to be showing that in this video. If you enjoy this type of content, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for future videos. And so while you're down there, there is also a link to Weeks Exchange. They have a promotion going on right now where you can earn up to $19,000 by futures trading. And so this goes on for about another 11 days. And so there is no KYC required for this exchange, and it is a simple email registration. And so definitely make sure to check this out. You can do spot and futures trading. And so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the Ripple news here. We have XRP set for a $160 billion market shakeup as Ripple kicks off testing of its much hyped stablecoin. And so Ripple is going to be launching its stablecoin here probably by the end of the year. And I think that this is going to have a huge impact on the stablecoin market, currently valued around $160 billion. And so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the information I am talking about here. I am on the Ripple documentation. And so we can see a lot of this information here is set up to start implementing this technology. And so we can see a lot of different tutorials here, settings, different Ripple payments direct, explaining exactly how to use this software, what happens, there's an overview here, right? They have different information you can look at, you can look into the settings, they have an int introduction page, they have best practices, so you can understand exactly what is happening when you are using this, how it is going to function, right? They have the API reference here, they have error codes just in case anything comes up. You can go ahead and look into that as well. And so they have all these different tutorials set up, right? And so all of these banks can start utilizing this technology. And so they have all of this information right here, right? It is all set to go. I think it's going to be implemented here. It's definitely going to be start being used, especially with the lawsuit ending. And so some information on here that I find very interesting and that I'm going to be sharing is the different bank IDs. This shows that some of the world's largest banks are working with Ripple here. And so let's go ahead and take a look at the bank IDs here. We can see in the Philippines here that they already have bank IDs assigned to different banks. And so we can see the list here. Some of the largest banks are Bank of America. We have Bank of China here, right? The largest bank in China. That is massive. We have Citibank here. We have Deutsche Bank, right? One of the largest banks in Germany. We have HSBC. And then we have JP Morgan Chase Bank here, right? They have always been against cryptocurrencies, always against Bitcoin. However, they're participating here with Ripple. It's getting very interesting, right? And so you can see some of the other banks here as well. We have Standard Charter Bank, a digital asset bank. And so you can see the list there. And I think this is only going to continue to grow. Now, if I take a look at the world's largest banks, we can see Bank of China here is number four, right? They have $4.5 trillion of assets in 2023. We have JP Morgan with $3.8 trillion of assets. And so a lot of the banks on the list there are very large, right? They are starting to understand the technology for Ripple. They are working to understand how to implement this technology. And it is going to change the way we make fin financial transactions today. And so let's go ahead and take a look at some other news here. We can see that Blockchain Shy Bank of America quietly pilots Ripple technology. And so they have been piloting and testing this for a very long time. They have been working very closely with Ripple. And so we can see this article here was from October 17th, 2019. And so they've been working with them for almost five years. And so Bank of America here is on this list with a bank ID. And so we can see that they are working with Ripple very closely. Now, in addition to that, we have German banking giant, giant highlights Ripple's use of XRP for efficient global payments. Now, this is what about, about a year ago, right? A five-year-old report from German banking giant Deutsche Bank and the banker highlights the use of XRP by Ripple to facilitate efficient cross-border payments. And so as I mentioned, they've been developing and trying to implement this technology for a very long time. Now that the lawsuit is over, we're gonna, going to start seeing implementation and utility of Ripple, and it's going to drive the price up substantially, right? I mean, just look at the size of the financial industry. It is absolutely massive. It has not changed much over the last 100 years. However, it is about to get a huge upgrade. And so I think that blockchain and cryptocurrencies is going to have the biggest impact on the financial sector. This is always something I have been focusing on. Let's go ahead and take a look here at some of the features for that. We can see that Ripple Payments Direct provides the following features. 
And so they have onboarding, simplified customer onboarding experience and general cross-border payments process. There is no crypto needed, no need to hold or manage cryptocurrencies. And so Ripple facilitates all of those transactions. They have a payment network, a network of payout partners for the last mile payment delivery on optimized payment paths to reach a beneficiary. And so we have compliance here, guarantee that transactions are compliant with local and national regulations, right? This is one of the only cryptocurrencies out there that has went through all of the lawsuit. I mean, this cryptocurrency is more compliant and regulated than any other cryptocurrency out there. They also have auto retry and the system retries payments on your behalf. And so, as I mentioned, this is going to have a huge impact on the financial industry. I definitely think this is going to change the way we do things. It's going to increase the speed of transactions. It's going to increase the traceability of transactions as well. And it's also going to reduce the cost. And so this is definitely something to be paying attention to moving forward. Now, let's take a look at the stablecoin market. As I mentioned, Ripple is going to be launching their stablecoin. They're in the process of that. And so the current stablecoin market cap is $166 billion. And so Ripple's stablecoin is going to be one of the most regulated and compliant stablecoins out there. And so USDC here is compliant, especially with Mika regulations that went live about two months ago. However, Tether and other stablecoins here may not have that regulation and compliance. And so Tether having 115 billion market cap. And so we're going to see Ripple stablecoin come in here and really disrupt the stablecoin market. Right? I mean, so I would not be surprised to see it right off the get-go be a $35 billion market cap. And it is going to be backed. They already announced that. They are going to be transparent. They are going to be showing the reserves in the money that backs this one-to-one. -one. And I think that's something very positive. Right, That's something that Tether's not very transparent about. And so I think that's going to be something that is very bullish for the cryptocurrency markets. And I think this is going to have a huge impact. And so if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for future content. And as always, this is not financial advice. This is just my personal opinion. Thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next video.